Well, hey there, YouTube. Uh, I don't know if any of you out there that have ground source heat pumps have been having a slow leak in your ground loop. Um, I have, over the years, had to pump it up a couple of times, have a contractor come out, and, you know, three, four hundred bucks later, now I got the pressure up, but it just slowly leaks out. Uh, my pumps are getting noisy this winter, and uh, so I've got some low pressure in my pipes. So this is uh, a solution that I just came up with. Uh, it's working really well. I, uh, out of some PVC, I've created a, a bit of a invention here. This whole tank will pressurize the system through the pressure temperature port. So this right here will go into the pressure temperature port and you don't have to break into the system, you don't have to open any pipes, we're just going to inject just enough water so that we can, uh, or fluid, so that we can make it uh, pump up again. <clears throat> so from 4 inch PVC, you can see what I did there, I've got a gauge here to measure how much pressure I've got in there, <clears throat> a hose input, I've got a Schrader valve here, um, my local water pressure is a little low, it's about 30 pounds. The ground uh, pump should go to about 20, 25 pounds. I thought this, if I put a little air pressure behind it, it might speed it up. Um, this is a level gauge for when the, so you can tell when you're getting low, so you don't put any air in the system. And of course, a clear tube and a pressure temperature gauge or a uh, port. You can see that little needle. That's off of a pressure gauge. So that's all. That's all there is in there. So let me uh, crank it up and we'll see how it goes. Quick overview of the heat pump system. Those are two tanks <clears throat> that feed the hydronic uh, floor loops. They have 10 zones, each driven by an individual pump there. And they sit above the beer fridge slash heat pump. There's the pump back down there. That gauge down there is the, the gauge that's currently monitoring the pressure of the ground loop. Now, <clears throat> I've added methanol, also known as washer fluid, to the pressurizing tank here, and we're going to pressurize it up, and uh, we'll flow some methanol into the system. So I thought I'd just tack this on there. These are something I wanted to show you. I got these on eBay. These are like a buck and a quarter a piece. They're CPU temperature uh, gauges, digital gauges. Um, they come with a little lead and a probe that you just uh, tape. I put some heavy rubber sticky tape, not just electrical tape, but uh, put that on the brass fitting here and they run on five volts. They're all kind of uh, wire tied together back here to a 5 volt power supply that you plug in. I've got uh, my hydronic loop uh, out hot temperature and this is the input temperature so that gives me about a 15 degree difference when it's running. Here's my ground loop in and out here. These are about 5 degrees difference when it's running and then my the superheater loop. So I can, that's for my uh, domestic hot water. I also added this uh, switch here to turn the superheater on and off if I want to. That wasn't a factory uh, addition. I don't know why they don't give you control over that, but sometimes they don't want the superheater on. If it gets super cold outside, it gives me a little more okay, heat I've into the I've the line. I've got about uh, 40 pounds of air that was put in through the Schrader valve here. And this is the level of the methanol in the system. Now Turn this valve here and this comes through our blue line and we're going to see 4,000 feet of pipe pressurize with through this through this uh, needle that's in this side of the ground loop. So we're at 10. Fifteen, 
No, this is exciting. But uh, there's really no other way to do this unless you pay somebody to come in hundreds of dollars an hour or a hundred or plus more dollars an hour to pressurize this up. <coughs> and your pumps will thank you. So there's 20 pounds. The uh, manufacturer recommends 15 or 20 pounds or so, and it'll keep the pumps quiet. Then you need to turn this valve. It stops. Pull this out. And we're done. A little extra there. And we're done. So there you go. $400 saved and I can do this anytime I want. So leave a suggestion in the comment box if you have any greater ideas. But this just saved me a few hundred bucks in service calls. And it'll probably have to be used again because I do have a slow leak somewhere out in my 5,000 feet of ground loop. I'm going to go open that beer fridge.